Okay, so we are setting up the stream now. I'm going to need a minute while I get everything going. Normally we would have, like, music. Maybe we can go somewhere with ambient Minecraft sounds. While I get set up. Let's go to Coralysis. Yeah, Coralysis has spiders. That's a good plan. We're going to go to Coralysis. We'll be setting up uh, the stream real soon. Real quick. But yeah, we'll go listen to Corellis' spiders while I get the stream set up so it doesn't sound like the audio is broken. People won't be like, what? Why is there no audio? There's going to be audio. Just be patient. We can't have all the audio at once. It'd be hard to hear or something. Okay. So let's uh, make sure that mob sounds are on. Great. Okay. Cool. I will set up the stream now. Thank you.
Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Chapter One Loomings. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse, and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. It is a way I have of driving off the spleen and regulating the circulation whenever I feel myself growing grim about the mouth, whenever it is a damp, drizzly November in my soul, whenever I find myself involuntarily pausing before coffin warehouses and bringing up the rear of every funeral I meet, and especially whenever my hypos get such an upper hand of me that it requires a strong moral principle to prevent me from deliberately stepping into the street and methodically knocking people's hats off. Then I account it about high time to get to sea as soon as I can. This is my substitute for pistol and ball. With a philosophical flourish, Cato throws himself upon the sword I quietly take to the ship. There is nothing surprising in this. If they but knew it, almost all men in their degree, some time or other, cherish very nearly the same feelings toward the ocean with me. There is by now in your insular city of Manhattan, belted round by wharves as Indian Isles by coral reefs, commerce surrounds it with her surf. Right and left, the streets take you waterward. Its extreme downtown is the Battery, where that noble mole is washed by waves and cooled by breezes, which is a few hours previous we're out of sight of land. Look at the crowds of water gazers there. Circumambulate the city of a dreamy Sabbath afternoon. Go from Corlear's Hook to Conti's ship, and from there by Whitehall northward. What do you see? Posted like silent sentinels all around the town stand thousands upon thousands of mortal men fixed in ocean reveries, some leaning against the spiles, some seated upon the pier heads, some looking over the bulwarks of ships from China, some high aloft in the rigging, as if striving to get a still better seaward peep. But these are all landsmen of weekdays pent up in lath and plaster, tied to counters, nailed to benches, clinched to desks. How then is this? Are the green fields gone? What do they have? But look, here come more crowds, pacing straight for the water, and seemingly bound for a dive. Strange. Nothing will content them but the extremest limit of the land. Loitering under the shady lee of yonder warehouses will not suffice. No! They must get just as nigh the water as they possibly can, without falling in. And there they stand, miles of them, leagues, inlanders all. They come from lanes and alleys, streets and avenues, north, east, south, and west. Yet here they all unite. Tell me, does the magnetic virtue of the needles of the compasses of all those ships attract them thither? Once more, say you are in the country. In some high land of lakes, take almost any path you choose.
and ten to one, it carries you down in a dale and leaves you there by a pool in the stream. There is magic in it. Let the most absent-minded of men be plunged in his deepest reveries. Stand that man on his legs, set his feet a-going, and he will infallibly lead you to water. If water there be in that region. Should you ever be athirst in the great American desert, try this experiment. If your caravan happened to be supplied with a medical, med a metaphysical professor, yes, as everyone knows, meditation and water are wedded forever. But here is an artist. He desires to paint you the dreamiest, shadiest, quietest, most enchanting bit of romantic landscape in all the Valley of the Seiko. What is the chief element he employs? There stand his trees, each with a hollow trunk, as if a hermit and a crucifix were within. And here sleeps his meadow, and there sleep his cattle, and up from yonder cottage goes a sleepy smoke. Deep into distant woodland winds a, a mazy way, reaching to overlapping spurs of mountains bathed in their hillside blue. But though the picture lies thus tranced, and though this pine tree shakes down its sighs like leaves upon the shepherd's head, yet all were vain, unless the shepherd's eye were fixed upon the magic stream before him. Go visit the prairies in June, when for scores on scores of miles you wade knee-deep among tiger lilies. What is the one charm want wanting? Water. There is not a drop of it there. Were Niagara but a cataract of sand, would you travel a thousand miles to see it? Why did the poor poet of Tennessee, upon suddenly receiving two handfuls of silver, deliberate whether to buy him a coat, which he sadly needed, or invest his money in a pedestrian trip to Rockaway Beach? Why is every robust, healthy boy with robust, healthy soul in him at some time or other crazy to go to sea. Why upon your first voyage as a passenger did you yourself feel such a mystical vibration when first told that you and your ship were now out of sight of land? Why did the old Persians hold the sea holy? Why did the Greeks give it a separate deity and own brother of Jove? Surely all this is not without meaning. And still deeper, the meaning of that story of Narcissus, who, because he could not grasp the tormenting, mild image he saw in the fountain, plunged into it and was drowned. But... That same image we ourselves see in all rivers and oceans. It is the image of the ungraspable phantom of life. And this is the key to it all. Now, when I say that I have the habit of going to sea, whenever I grow hazy about the eyes and begin to be overly conscious of my lungs, I do not mean to have it inferred that I ever go to sea as a passenger. <laughs> For to go as a passenger, you must needs have a purse. And a purse 
is but a rag unless you have something in it. Besides, passengers get seasick, grow quarrelsome, don't sleep of nights, do not enjoy themselves much as a general thing. No. I never go to sea as a passenger. Nor, though I am something as a, uh, you know, of a salt, do I ever go to sea as a commodore or a captain or a cook. I abandon the glory and distinction of such offices to those who like them. For my part, I abominate all honorable, respectable toils, trials, and tribulations of any kind whatsoever. It is quite as much as I can do to take care of myself without taking care of ships, barks, brigs, schooners, and whatnot. And as for going as a cook, though I confess there is considerable glory in that, A cook being a sort of officer on ship uh, uh, board, yet, uh, oh, sorry, yet somehow I never fancied, fancied broiling fowls, though once broiled, judiciously buttered, and judgmatically salted and peppered, there is no one who will speak more respectfully, not to say reverently. of a broiled fowl than I will. It is out of the idolatrous dotings of the old Egyptians upon broiled ibis and roasted river horse that you see the mummies of those creatures in the huge bakehouses, the pyramids. No. When I go to sea, I go as a simple sailor. Right before the mast, plumb down into the forecastle, aloft there to the royal masthead. True. They rather order me about some and make me jump from spar to spar like a grasshopper in a May meadow. And at first, this sort of thing is unpleasant enough. It touches one's sense of honor, particularly if you come of an old established family in the land. The Van Resselaers or Randolphs or Hardicanutes. And more than all, if just previous to putting your hand to the tar pot, you have been lording it as a country schoolmaster, making the tallest boys stand in awe of you. The transition is a keen one, I assure you, from a schoolmaster to a sailor, and requires a strong decoction of Seneca and the Stoics to enable you to grin and bear it. But even this wears off in time. What of it? If some old hunks of a sea captain orders me to get a broom and sweep down the decks, what does that indignity amount to? Wade, I mean, in the scales of the New Testament. Do you think the archangel Gabriel thinks anything the less of me? Because I promptly and respectfully obey that old hunk, in that particular instance? Who ain't a slave? Tell me about that. Well then, however the old sea captains may order me about, however they may thump and punch me about, I have the satisfaction of knowing that it is all right, that everybody else is one way or other served in much the same way, either in a physical or a metaphysical point of view, that is. And so the universal thump is passed round, and all hands should rub each other's shoulder blades and be content. Again, I always 
go to sea as a sailor. Because they make a point of paying me for my trouble. Whereas they never pay passengers a single penny that I heard of. On the contrary, passengers themselves must pay. And there is all the difference in the world between paying and being paid. The act of paying is perhaps the most uncomfortable affliction that the two orchard thieves entailed upon us. But being paid, what will compare with it? The urbane activity with which a man receives money is really marvelous considering that we so earnestly to be believe money to be the root of all earthly ills, and that on no account can a moneyed man enter heaven. Ah, how cheerfully we consign ourselves to perdition. Finally, I always go to sea as a sailor. Because of the wholesome exercise and pure air of the forecastle deck. For, as in this world, headwinds are far more prevalent than winds from stern. That is, if you never violate the Pythagorean maxim. So, for the most part, the Commodore on the quarterdeck gets his atmosphere at second hand from the sailors on the forecastle. He thinks he breathes it first, but not so. In much the same way do the commonality lead their leaders in many other things, at the same time that the leaders little suspect it. But wherefore it was that after having repeatedly smelt the sea as a merchant sailor, I should now take it into my head to go on a whaling voyage. This is the invisible police officer of the fates, who has the constant surveillance of me, and secretly dogs me, and influences me in some unaccountable way. He can better answer than anyone else. And, doubtless, me going on my whaling voyage formed part of the great program of Providence that was drawn up a long time ago. It came in a sort of brief interlude and solo between more extensive performances. I take it that this part of the bill must have run something like this. Grand contested election for the presidency of the United States. Whaling voyage. By one Ishmael! Bloody battle in Afghanistan! Though I cannot tell why it was exactly that those stage managers, the fate, put me down for this shabby part of a whaling voyage when others were sent f down for magnificent parts in high tragedies and short and easy parts in genteel comedies and jolly parts in, in farces. Though... I cannot tell why this was exactly, yet, now that I recall all the circumstances, I think that I can see a little into the springs and motives which, being cunningly presented to me under various disguises, induced me to sit and about performing my part I did, besides cajoling me into the delusion it was a choice resulting from my own unbiased free will and discriminating judgment <laughs> chief among those motives was the overwhelming idea of the great whale himself such a portentous and mysterious monster roused all my curiosity then the wild and distant seas where he rolled his island bulk, the undeliverable nameless perils of the whale. These, with all the attending marvels of a thousand Patagonian ships, uh, sights and sounds, 
helped sway me to my wish. With other men, perhaps, such things would not have been inducements. But as for me, I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas and land on barbarous coasts, not ignoring what is good. I am I am quick to perceive a horror and could still be social with it, would they let me, since it is but well to be on friendly terms with all the inmates of the place one lodges in. By reason of these things, then, the whaling voyage was welcome. The great floodgates of the wonder world swung open, and, in the wild conceits that swayed me to my purpose, two and two there floated my inmost soul, endless procession of the, of the whale, and, midmost of them all, one great hooded phantom, like a snow hill in the air. Thus concludes Chapter 1 of Herman Melville's Moby Dick, Loomings. <sighs> Thank you all for your patience uh, getting the stream going. I had a little bit of an adventure with the oven earlier with my dinner plans. So I, first off, I want to say thank you to anybody who tipped during that. Uh, Karen sent five and says, love your streams. That puts us now 15 away from the next face camera expansion. Uh, milestone. So thank you so much. We're, we're going to have time for chapter two. Chapters in this book are a lot shorter. Well, sometimes a lot shorter than in Dracula. They're more uneven. What was for dinner? Oh, that's a whole thing. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. But first, we got some other tips I need to thank people for. Tommy boy! Tips 50. Wow! 15, 25, 45, 50. That gets us three face camera expansions. Is that right? 15, 25, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, 190, I think I was the one who broke the vanilla server with a string duper in the spawn chunks that I forgot to turn off. A spring duper in the spawn chunks. Okay. Uh, I could probably delete those. Hopefully nobody built anything important there. Please accept this tip as an apology, but also an appreciation for the work you do. Sorry and thank you. No, I'm sure there's some more surgical way we can deal with that. Thank you for letting me know, Tommy. That will actually help narrow down my investigation. Um... So thanks to Tommy getting us two face camera expansion milestones now and only five away from the next one. We are about to... Uh, oh, sorry. I moved OBS because of the uh, the whale. Expand Jost. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, boy. Uh, then we are going to find my eyeball and lower the Joe Pasty now once I find that filters panel. All this stuff is moved out of the way to make room for Moby Dick. So hold on one second. Brr, that's going to drop us down to a frigid 32% with that first face camera expansion milestone. Then for our next face camera expansion milestone, Grow Hills. D -d -d -d. And we are going to lower the Joe Pasty now to 24%. Thank you, Tommy. That puts us only $5 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. Uh, how am I playing Minecraft and reading at the same time? I'm constantly reading and playing Minecraft at the same time. I'm constantly, um, what do you call it? Uh, re uh, like reading three chats. Because we got the the Discord chat, the Twitch chat, and the YouTube chat. Yurgi says if you can get the server up at all, like a slash kill, specifically on items only, might do the trick. Yeah, well, there's probably a. Tr I could probably increase the amount of RAM on the server, or download the world and run it on my own computer, which has more power than the server does, for or at least it has more RAM. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out, Tommy. You've probably actually just saved me four hours of screwing around trying to investigate that server problem. So actually, thank you for owning up to that. That's you've more than made up for any trouble you caused just by volunteering that information. The fifty was nice, but the information is worth way more. 
So yeah, no, no, no. This is actually really helpful. I will start uh, working on that. Uh, I definitely have time on Monday, so it might still I might still not have time to do that tonight because I gotta wake up early tomorrow. Tomorrow's an airport day. I gotta get my kid. But yeah, that's that's really helpful. Uh, for those of you wondering what I'm doing in Minecraft, Etho is buying a bunch of stone from me for two diamonds per shulker box of stone. So I'm in the process of filling these shulkers. And so we are going to offload any stone we have right now for Etho. And then when we're done offloading the stone into the shulkers, we're going to start digging and continue reading chapter two. But okay. So yeah, let me tell you about my 90-minute dinner break, which I thought that'll be plenty of time for dinner, right? So I realize, oh, I actually need to run to the grocery store. And so, uh, yeah, that took longer than I thought. And I was like, okay, well, I got this, this take-and-bake pizza. It's not frozen. It's, like, made with fresh ingredients or whatever. And I can just throw this in the oven and it'll take 15 minutes. And I've got 30 minutes until the stream starts, right? So that's easy. So then I've got 15 minutes left to eat after I've cooked my pizza. So I set the oven to preheat to 400 or 450 or whatever it's supposed to be. And then uh, when it beeps, I go over there. I put the pizza in the oven. I hit bake time or cook time, go up to 15 minutes. And then I apparently, because I'm just exhausted, hit cancel instead of bake. And so then 26 minutes later, so cancel turns off the oven. It doesn't just cancel the timer. So at least the pizza was not burnt. It had just been, like, slow-cooked because it's the oven stopped generating heat um, as soon as I hit cancel. Okay. So, what is this guy doing? Oh, yeah, we'll ban that guy. Sorry. Um, so, the pizza was at least... So, when I realized, I was like... Cause like, I basically went and sat down and collapsed. And I was like, well, I'll hear the oven when it's time to get up and get dinner. The oven never beeped because I canceled the timer, but the pizza was not cooked at its appropriate temperature. <laughs> and that was one of the reasons we had to sit at the spider farm so I could frantically scarf down two of the slices of pizza. Uh, okay, so we need to pull this shulker out. This is the special one that we need to empty. So, but I mean, it was fully cooked. It just wasn't like cooked the way you would normally, in terms of like crispness and stuff. But yeah. The extra 11 minutes at a lower temperature did fine. It was very passable, lukewarm pizza. Uh, oh, which So, like, at least it didn't catch fire or something. You know, it's fine. I just, you know, after going to the grocery, my back was bugging me. I was like, I'm just going to sit down and rest for a minute. Uh, yeah, it ended up be, being more like a reheated pizza. Yeah, that's not a bad analogy. Uh, there. So... Yeah, my goal was to have at least one proper meal today, and you know what? I'm going to count it. That's that's fine. Huge watermelons! I had so much fun making that video with Mumbo and everybody. We've really been going out of our way this season to try to schedule more big group recordings. They're a nightmare in terms of, like, all, people are only going to end up watching one perspective, but we just kind of, like realize like that's okay we don't have to care about our um stats and stuff like honestly i'm not even gonna include that footage probably in my episode other than to just say go watch you know i might have like five seconds of me like hey we uh, also i went and recorded something with mumbo and these other 10 people go check it out on mumbo's channel because if I posted the same footage two days later, nobody's going to watch it twice. It's like Mumbo didn't really cut anything out. That was just our entire conversation for that amount of time. Uh, so there's no sense to being like, oh, let me show my point of view. You'll get something you wouldn't have otherwise. Like, no, Mumbo really didn't cut it down that much. It was all gold and you've already had the chance to see it. But yeah, so we're going to have to be we're, we're trying to be better about like just letting people host big events without trying to worry about like, 
well, how's everybody going to get footage? We don't need it. We don't need it. We all help each other. We all do. Be we all benefit in the long term, you know? So, hey, thank you very much to Poster Nerd from Twitch, who says, love when you do the Saturday night readings and tips 20. Woo! That gets us 15 past our next Face Gamer expansion milestone. So here we go. It's time to expand. Just do 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 do. And we are going to find my eyeball now and lower the Joe Pasty to 20%. What time am I streaming tomorrow? I'm doing the normal Hermitcraft stream day stuff at 5 p.m. This is not part of Hermitcraft stream day. This is just my Saturday night weird stream. Enjoy the weirdness. Um, but yeah, I'll be streaming tomorrow at 5 as part of Hermitcraft stream day, 5 central, and I'll be streaming at 8.30 central as part of my usual um, nightly stream. If you go to joehills.net slash soon, you can see my streaming schedule. Great point. Oh, I realize we should uh, bookmark what we're reading. Which Hermit is streaming right now? Oh, we've already wrapped up uh, for the day. Hermitcraft stream day ended already for Saturday. I should pin what we're reading in both chats. I messed up when I was trying to put, pin it to YouTube earlier. It's a lot harder to pin things in YouTube than it is to play Minecraft while reading. I'll tell you that. One of those had just a half stack in a slot. Uh, it's It'll even out. Don't worry. Okay. Where's the Hermitcraft stream day schedule posted? Uh, I posted on my Twitter or retweeted Ren posting it, but I don't have it handy. So the way this works is you can shift click shulker boxes that have the exact same stuff in them. So most of these should be 100% full of 27 stacks of 64 stone, right? So any that aren't won't shift click into a chest later when I try to move them all. And then I'll put some surplus stone in any that have a little gap. If I try to go through them now, it won't help me find them. Yeah, these are the shulkers we agreed to deliver for Etho. We'll deliver them full, but now is not the time to verify that everyone has all full stacks. That's the next phase. Uh, Figmentera, like, links are usually going to get cut out. So, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, I was worried. Uh, Yurgi says, I'm glad that the problems with the vanilla server were something mundane with a duper and not something weird with the terrain gen mods. Yeah, if we were having problems with the terrain gen mods, that would really wreck things in a harder to fix way. Yeah, this is this is this is easy enough to fix. I don't have a lot of time set aside to work on it, but it won't take that much time either. So on the whole, it's it's just a matter of me getting to it cuz uh yeah, tomorrow I've got two streams and I've got to get my kid from the airport. So I can't uh okay. So this one's actually okay. So this is a shulker of mine. I'll trade that for the one I took from Etho that I put my stuff in temporarily. So then he gets the same number of shulkers back. Yeah, uh, Cub Fan has a stat book in his thing that showed I had dug 290,000 stone and Hypno was second with 32,000. Hypno was like, oh man, I thought I had uh, dug out a lot of stone, but then you had 10 times as much. It's like, yeah. Yeah, maybe nine times as much, but you know, who's counting besides Cub Fan? Okay. Okay. Hey, Pug the Master. Glad that you, uh, yeah, m glad that you're, you're able to take a break from your move. Moving is always a huge, huge energy drain. 
Pearly Whirly says, Joe, this is one of your first streams of yours I've caught. So just to warn you, Pearly Whirly, Saturday night we do something a little different over here where we do big terraforming projects or like farm operation projects that are kind of more, mun uh, they're, they're more like straightforward and chill. So that way I can focus on reading stories to the audience. We have a whole playlist of Dracula from last year where I read Dracula to everybody over the course of about a half a year. And then for this season, our big novel that we're reading is Moby Dick. And if y'all don't know why we chose Moby Dick, Moby Dick is not technically science fiction, but it actually anticipates the invention of Wikipedia better than any other book I've ever read from hundreds of years ago. Like, the whole thing is written like a guy at a party is trying to tell a story about this time he went on a boat, but he keeps, like, looking stuff up and, like, going into these huge digressions about, like, okay, you might think you know what a crow's nest is, because you've seen these things on ships that look kind of like this shape, but that's not a real crow's nest. The actual inventor of the crow's nest, John Crow, was born in this town, which is notable for this, and it's just, like... It's just like it's like this guy is telling this story while going down this Wikipedia rabbit hole of every single thing he sees. And yeah, we're co-streaming to YouTube and Twitch, Colin. Thank you for noticing. Um, it's a really interesting story in that way. Oh, dang it. Wrong stone. It's a really interesting story in that it it's told in a way that almost no other novel has ever been written or will be written again, probably. But is also like exactly like like i said you're at a party with this guy who's just like oh man i went on this trip to spain oh let me let me look up this thing about uh the tower the pillar of hercules lighthouse oh did you know that hercules was actually blah 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 it's just like going on and on and on I think um, Dog Breath says, call me Ishmael. This guy might not even be using his real name. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, the story opens with him saying, what up? It's your boy Ishmael. You ever get tired of life on land? I do. You ever go to New York City on Sunday when everybody's not working? You know what they're doing? They're looking at the sea. They should just go to sea. I go to sea. Not as a passenger. Never. No, passengers. Ugh. Terrible. The worst. Okay, so these ones under the furnaces here need to be filled. Okay, so we can empty this one into here and then we need four more stacks. Okay. So now we're going to do a little trick to determine if any of these are partially empty where we're going to put we're going to try and um, shift click these into a chest. OK, so we've got all of those and we need to find a big empty chest like the one in the film aliens after the incident. OK, so these two are having complete stacks. 45 and 37. See, that was super easy to do and didn't involve me opening and closing a million shulkers. Right? It's simple because it doesn't have to be complex. So we need to actually go and get more shulkers. Okay. 
So now, if we shift click those, they all go. See? Fancy. Okay. So let's head back and uh, leave this for Etho real quick. And then we'll get into reading chapter two once I... I need empty boxes to put the stuff into that I pull out here. But yeah, how many shulkers is that? That's 27, 30, 31 shulkers heading Etho's way. Stream has been going very well, Red Dragon Slayer. Thank you so much. Uh, Stephanie Hall, don't worry. Uh, we haven't done any music, so you won't miss the VOD. Or it'll be in the VOD. We shouldn't have problems with this VOD. I'm really hoping. Um, just as a reminder, for anybody who is enjoying the stream and is excited that we're getting back to reading every Saturday night, tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Hills and YouTube Super Chat. This is one of those things that when I explain to people what I do, they're always like, and people pay you for that. And it would be really great if I could be like, yes, yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> so... Okay, let's go drop off these boxes for Etho. We'll grab some fresh ones, and then we'll start Chapter 2. I am very excited. Chapter 2 is called The Carpet Bag. Ugh. Ooh. I don't know if Etho has a proper house. I mean, yeah, he does. I do know that Etho has a proper house, but I'm just going to put this in the shopping district anyway. Okay. So... Sleep with one eye, eth open. La da 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 If His name is very convenient to spell with blocks. I'm just freehanding that, too. Okay, so... Uh, whoops. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. I'm just going to start underlining it repeatedly and maybe add some little uh, quote marks around it. I should leave it in Etho's mailbox. I actually don't have a mail set up yet, but I also don't know that you can send... I don't know if sending 50 shulker boxes is the most efficient way to do this. Sarah KT says, why is it blurry? Is it blurry? Oh, sorry. Not supposed to be. Hey, we got a tip rolling in. Let's see who it's from. Salem! Tips 20, who says, excited for Moby Dick, especially as I haven't read it before. We were five away from our next Space Gamer expansion milestone. Now we are 15 past it. Here we go. It's time to expand. Joe. <laughs> Lowering the Joe Pasty now to 20%. Wait, no, we were at 20%. To 16%. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much to Salem for supporting the arts and my work in particular. We're going to move that up there. I've got everything's weird because of how I've got the Moby Dick set up. 
I need to also increase the text size. I thought I was going to be able to read it at a smaller text size and track the text. It's been a while since we've done one of these streams on uh, where we read, so I'm relearning stuff. The eyes are very distracting. Thank you. I grew them myself. <sighs> Fifty shulkers in the mail would cost fifty stamps. Would cost you seven diamonds. Oh, I don't even have. Yeah, that we're we're not great, not great there. Um, yeah, I don't have I don't have a mailbox to send them from. In the long term, though, Etho wanting to get these, I could just ship these directly to him. What is the capacity? How much backlog? How much mail can you receive before it starts, like, despawning? Is there, like, a maximum number of shulkers you can get in the mail before it overflows the system? Twenty-seven. So, yeah, I basically I've already... I've, I've got more than twenty-seven shulkers I need to send. However many you can get in a minecart. Okay. Barrel plus hopper, so 32, people are saying. Yeah, that's more than I really want to deal with. Okay, so let's, uh, are any, is there any stone in these? Let's just quickly grab whatever stone we have left over here. Hey, we got another tip rolling in via PayPal. Let's see who it's from. It's from Joju, tipping five, who says, speaking of the joys of getting paid. Woo. Thank you very much, Joju. That is going to get us to our next face camera expansion milestone. So here we go. It's time to expand. Joost. La -da 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 OBS really doesn't like it when the camera gets this big. Uh, lowering the Joe Pasty. Once we get my eyeball recentered there, lowering the Joe Pasty now to 12%. Thank you very much to Joju. Okay. And sun's getting real low. Ugh. Oh, I could just leave them in the post office with a sign that says for Etho? Oh, that's actually pretty good. Oh, I bet Pearl would love that. That's that's pretty funny. I've actually been getting some great deals because so many people need bulk materials. Since they didn't do a lot of terraforming early, they don't have extra dirt or stone. Like, I traded Jevin a bunch of coal for his coal shop. Welcome to Benur Belschina. Thank you. Pearl will do bulk mail. Okay, good to know. That's that's fantastic to hear. I think I'm going to start arranging these in, like, squares. Because then it's easier for me to remember how far I got along the line. And not accidentally leave stuff half empty. Which, I mean, I was only off by less than a stack last time filling stuff up. So that's actually I'm I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, but Okay. So we're going to finish filling these out of here. And then we'll start grabbing stuff just from the mountain itself. When is the mountain scared? So Etho also wants the cobble. So like we might actually just fill all of these before we start chapter two, just out of these uh, chests here. We can actually consolidate a lot of these down too, which I'm really excited about. 
But I want to get all the. I promised Etho, or no, I prom I told Etho that because Hypno has the cobblestone permit and has been hooking me up with unlimited iron, um, that the cobblestone is going to go to Etho second. Hypno has the opportunity to come pick it up if he wants to. But any that's not picked up will eventually probably end up at Ethos. And uh, Etho is going to be paying me two diamonds for each of these that I deliver. So, let's see. How many did we have before? We had 27 plus... Uh, what was it? 27 plus 4? So we delivered 31 already. So that's 62 diamonds? Okay. And we're still filling more. This is this is fantastic. I don't I don't even have the stone permit and I'm getting rich here. You know, setting up a sorting system for this might not actually be dumb for, like, the big stuff, the ones that people want. I am indeed wheeling and dealing. A family auto mart, the wheeling and dealing starts. A family auto mart, the wheeling and dealing starts. That was my favorite car commercial when I was a kid. There was just... Th these guys who owned this car sales place in Florida like they wanted to this was before YouTube existed but they basically wanted to be YouTubers but YouTube didn't exist yet and so they were like you know we can make it a business expense to book 30 minute infomercial times when like TV is cheap like like slow like Saturday at 2 p.m. bunch of people sitting at home might see our, our dumb show and it's just them doing a bunch of skits about, like, just, like, working at their car dealership. And then, like, so they would do a skit and then be like, here's the cars that we've got for sale this month. You know, whatever. We got these. We got those. Um, but, like, the thing is, like, the, the, the guy who, um, who, the main guy, who is called uh, the family man, his whole thing was, he was, like, a huge guy, but he, he, he was, like, really, uh very active um but he didn't look like he was in great shape and he's like people ask me family man how do you stay in such great shape and the answer is that every day i run a line of cars and so he's just like running down the like line of cars in the parking lot being like we got a mazda for four thousand two hundred dollars we got a ford blah 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 for thirty three hundred dollars we got this for this we got that for that blah, blah, blah. and he's just like he's screaming what the prices of the cars are while he runs past them and there's like and the like the camera guy doesn't have like a steady cam it's just his one of his co-workers sprinting after him with a camera while he yells about car prices it's it's beautiful and amazing. It's it's like, wow. You know, I, I, I feel like seeing stuff like that. Like, it wasn't just a local commercial. This was a 30-minute block of entertainment produced by the guys who own this car dealership. And and like I said, they, they, they had just enough of them trying to, like, sell cars to you that they could, like, tell the IRS that all the money they were spending on putting this on television was a business expense. But it was clearly not, like... It was not a good way to make money. It, it was them, like, trying to turn this into a tax write-off. You know what I mean? Like, they just wanted to have fun. Hey, we got a tip rolling in from Leslie for five, who says, excited for Moby Dick. Thank you very much, Leslie. That's gonna get us now 15 away from our next face camera expansion milestone. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Hills and YouTube Super Chat. Okay. So let's go ahead and fill up the rest of these with as much cobble as we can. Um, like I said, I it's going to be a lot easier for me to dig than to fill boxes while I'm reading. I was kind of experimenting with that earlier, so I want to get the boxes full and dropped off for Etho, send him an invoice, and then we can just worry about filling or making more stuff. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see here. But yeah, their their motto was at Family Auto Mart, we're wheeling and dealing. And like the uh, the the host, who like I said was a very large man, would do a cartwheel. Uh, when he said wheeling and dealing, he would he would do cartwheels, and they would like Photoshop him doing the cartwheels in front of all sorts of crazy stuff. Like it would start with him cartwheeling through the office, then him cartwheeling down the line of cars, and then they would like. You know, it would be clearly, like, green-screened him cartwheeling somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, um, oh, this one's actually full of the stuff from the other thing. Uh, so we might be able to... Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one's actually done. Fantastic. So we've got eight more stone. We're going to pull... This one aside here for for more stone for later. <laughs> wow, dang it, I found more stone apparently. I was not expecting that. Um Well, I liked the idea of having one over here that had a little bit of stone left in it. But this one's going back over here. Okay. Joe should do ads for his shops. Did you guys see when uh, Quinn and I did like a little jingle for uh, for XP Crafted's Half Foods? Half Foods for all of you. Half Foods for all of you. Y'all gotta eat. At Big Wood, we're logging and jogging. I'm gonna do a lap around the hourglass. It's time, everybody! Uh, please don't post fake donations. That's weird. You created the account 24 minutes ago to lie about donating in Spanish. That's weird. Okay. But yeah, one of my favorite local commercials was Salt Lake Community College Barbering and Cosmetology School An Unlicensed Salon Let me cut your hair! Let me cut your hair. Let me cut your hair. I'm only a student, but even if I mess it up, it was only $2. Let me cut your hair. At Salt Lake Community College Barbering and Cosmetology School, you're only limited by your imagination and by how far we are along in the semester. Oh, it's such a good commercial. Missionary special. Before you go, two haircuts for four dollars. You know, is it funny if I advertise my shop on the Imp and Skiz podcast? If I'm like, this is the only podcast that like 100%, maybe not 100%. I think that this podcast has better listenership among all of the hermits than any other piece of media. There is, like, if you were like, where could you put a billboard that all the hermits would see it? Uh, It would be an ad on the Imp and Skiz podcast, right? Okay, guys, we got a live read coming up. Uh, you know, boy, Impulse, you ever need a lot of wool, but like from a spider? 
Jeez, Skiz. I don't know when I don't need that. When do I not? I really do want to be on the Imp and Skiz podcast, but I'd like to try and time it with an actual trip to Arizona. There's a bunch of events out in Arizona that, uh, near where they live that I'm constantly trying to make fit my schedule but haven't yet. Um, I'd just rather be an in-person guest if I can. Because, you know, like, that's not an easy option for, like, Ren or Mumbo. But since I have reasons to go to Phoenix or wherever they live anyway, you know what I mean? It It's kind of one of those things where it's like, eh, I'm not in any rush to, like, do a call-in segment. I'd rather wait a few, you know. Like, I'm not traveling very much right now, but after the wedding, things will calm down a little bit, you know? Uh, Juliet Graves tips five and says imp and skiz ad read fun. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. So yeah, let's, um, we've actually, pro ace says grats on the wedding. Well, we haven't had it yet. We're still waiting for the final clearance from the immigration, uh, folks. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking is let's pull this stone out of here and swap it to cobble. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on. That one have extra normal stone too. Let's hold that in reserve for if we need it to fill anything else out. Nymph says, Every, uh, evening, y'all. I'm excited that the Saturday night readings are back. Yep, we had a great chapter one, and we're about to jump into chapter two. Uh, give me a second here. I'm just trying to get all these sorted out before we do anything else. Okay. Cool. So, as long as this one is the same as everything else. Yep. Okay, great. These are all full. So, we don't need to pull extra there. Okay, so this is, whoops, um, so let's see, we did 31 before, and then 31 plus 9 is 40, 49, 50, 54, 54 total. Yeah, we're reading the unabridged version. It should be, oh, did it not pin properly? I'm sorry, I don't know. I've been having so many problems with pins in Twitch today. It just, like, keeps, like, failing. Okay, I think I got it pre-pinned. Yeah, chapter one will be in the VOD. We were doing the stream with no music. It was the worst night for no music, though, because of problems with my oven. By which I mean user error with my oven. But yeah, we've got plenty of time to do chapter two, the carpet bag. I, I genuinely did not realize uh, we were going to use every shulker Etho had before we started mining. Okay. Oh, awesome, Phalo. Thank you. Whoa, nope. Don't have time for that. Uh. It's two thirds of a banana, Michael. What could it cost? Six dollars and sixty six cents? Okay. So we just got to figure out which of these are the stone ones. Okay, good. The stone ones are on top. So cobblestone, 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 cobblestone. Stone goes to here. Cobblestone, 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 cobblestone. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put... these around here. Perfect. There were precisely enough stone boxes. Oh, dang it. There's one extra. Ethel, whoa. How many were in this? Three, okay, so this is 12. Do we have 12 boxes left? Oh, we got 11. I can go get one of my own shulkers. It's fine. Plowing under his corn. Okay. Yeah, don't be rude to the other people in chat here. Okay. Do we have any... Let's just... Uh, yeah, we can manufacture our own shulker. Or just so we can finish... Ethowo. It either needs to be Ethowo or Ethuwu. We can't... We can't have Ethowo. Owu. Ethowu. Right? That's not great. Do we leave any... I don't think we left any stone in our things over here. Yeah, yeah. Ethel wool. Uh. Uh, okay. The and I brought the uh, ender pearls. Ethulu. Yeah, okay. Ethelwo, I brought you the shulker boxes with the stone and the cobble stone. I'm going to send up a screenshot of this as the story started. Yeah, yeah, we finished chapter one. We're about to read chapter two. I'm just trying to wrap up this task for Etho real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, we should bring this extra cobble back with us. We need cobble in here. We're trying to consolidate all of the different material. Yeah, I just I just want to have a clean break before we start the next segment. I know anything special for St. Patrick's. Well, I got two streams tomorrow, and I get to go spend most of the day in the airport. So yeah, it's always exciting. Uh, so hungry. Um, nom 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 nom. <laughs> We can move these up here. I can just uh, take that. Okay. Uh. 
Okay, so we want to put the eggs down here for later. Now we can put the seeds in here for later. We can cook some bread for now. It's only for now. It's bread! It's only for now. Nom nom. Airport's a lot less fun when you're not going anywhere, I'll tell you that. Okay. Are you playing in Hermitcraft? Yes. I'm about I'm on my way to deliver a last box of stone to Etho before Ooh, we start our next thing. Yeah, I probably could have written Etho's lab now that you say it. <clears throat> now that you mention it. Have I interacted with a pyramid scheme before? Yeah, I played TCG in Cubs Pyramid Arena. Hmm. Do I know how you can join Hermitcraft? No. It's really hard to get people onto Hermitcraft. Do 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 do. Bum 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 bum. bum. Is there a place I can go to look down on this and whisper no? Uh, okay. Uh, parkour. I want to take a screenshot in such a way that it's not clear the whole thing. And I'm going to send this to Etho on the Hermitcraft Discord. Okay, go to collabs here. Uh, upload a file, screenshots. Ether. Even though you only provided fifty four shulkers, I filled fifty five so I could finish. My lettering in front of you. <laughs> um, no rush on the hundred ten diamonds. Just bug me when it, uh, just bug me. Anytime I'm on the server. Uh. Okay. So at Etho, whatever else goes after that, just because I don't want people to know which is his account. Uh, so, we have sent a screenshot to Etho. Okay. <sighs> Big accomplishment. Oh, wow, that's really noticeable. <laughs> yeah, you come out that portal and that's... That's some large text there. That's, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Once again, in Hermitcraft, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. What did I do to get into Hermitcraft? 
Uh, I was invited to join Hermitcraft five weeks into season one. Hermitcraft wasn't a real thing yet. I had several thousand subscribers on YouTube, by which I mean like four or five, which used to be a big deal back then. <laughs> um, that's how I was. Uh, I did a charity stream for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And the guy who founded Hermitcraft saw it and thought I would be a good fit on account of my temperament and Minecraft weirdness. He, he told me, I, uh, I've i got a server full of redstoners and builders, but it's missing something. We need like a, a kind of a, a, what do you call it, a wild card. So, you know. That's me, I guess. It's hard to figure out how I'm supposed to do that well now that I'm one of, like, the most enduring members of the server. Because I'm old, so I don't always understand how things have changed. I, I'm still making the stuff I want to make but I don't always understand how the world has moved in the last 11 years because I was busy focusing on other stuff. Oh, well. Okay, so. Let's see, 110 diamonds. That's a, a reasonable amount, right? That's like, if we divide that by 9, that's like 12 blocks. Ooh, wow. So 12 blocks of diamonds. So according to Cub, I think you get he, with his mining methods, he could get like three diamonds per minute, he said on average. So 110 diamonds. Uh, let's see, 99 would be 33 minutes. So it's like 35 minutes. Yeah, I definitely spent more than 35 minutes mining this out. But whatever. I got some other stuff from this. I got my... Netherite upgrade templates. I got my iron from Hypno. I got my elytra from Jevon. We're we're building we're building something here, people. We're building something here. Okay. So, speaking of building something here, I was hoping to offload thing direct things directly into shulkers. Since, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bunch of my own shulkers and then I'll trade them when Etho provides me with new ones. Right. That makes sense to me. So we need to get logs. Do we have any logs? I think I might have used all of my logs for the wood shop. Do I have any tips for getting in? Uh, my advice for most people would be you shouldn't be trying to get in to Hermitcraft. Hermitcraft was created because the guy who founded it couldn't get into Mindcrack, which was the big SMP server at the time. And he was like, you know what? That's fine. I'm going to find the most talented other people who aren't on Mindcrack and uh, invite them all to play games with me. And, uh, you know, we're going to do our own thing. And then he got invited to Mindcrack and left uh, because he did such a good job. But yeah, um, you shouldn't be trying to join Hermitcraft. You should be trying to beat Hermitcraft. We are so old. We have been doing this for 11 years. It's too late for us to be nimble and agile in the ways that a new organization could be. You need to figure out what those opportunities are and then seize them. And eventually surpass us. Okay, let me... Oh. 
Oh, toxic glitter. Is it a bad idea for me to pitch you terrible mod ideas I had? I had this idea in the shower earlier, and I forgot to write it down because I was in the shower, and I don't have, like, a waterproof pencil in there. Um, but, okay. So, Toxic, I had this terrible idea for a mod, and I'm like, this is the sort of thing I wish I had more money. I would hire you to make this mod because it's a terrible idea. But I can't justify the cost with the wedding and stuff coming up. But just I want to share this idea since um, we're here anyway. So I had this idea for a mod that's called... So, so some of you may know the American expression, vote with your feet, which means if you don't like it, then leave, right? So I came up with the idea for a mod called Boat With Your Feet. And... It would let you eat food and, like, fire bows and arrows and stuff and use tools while in a boat because it's a pedal boat. And there, it, it would animate your legs kind of going up and down in kind of a cyclical fashion like you were in a pedal boat. It wouldn't necessarily, like, change the game. But... I feel like it's the sort of thing that, like... Because I, I was thinking, like, man, what could I put in Vault Hunters to really make it my own? I was like, man, if I could go to Iskal with, like, a Forge mod called Boat With Your Feet, that would be... <laughs> that would be something. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't add much to the game. But it's... It's something. Uh, Nwat says the line between genius and absurdity gets thinner every day. Yep, it sure does. Uh, when will the stream begin? Well, soon, probably. Soon. Okay. So we're going to toss these in here. I should probably hold a few of these shulkers in reserve for my own gear and stuff for later. So we're going to put six shulkers over here for now. We're not going to play the song right now because it'll get the VOD delisted. And then we can't have uh, Chapter 2. Uh, we can't have Chapter 1 up in the VOD. Okay. So. Here we go. Uh, ooh, actually, uh, let me grab all the stuff I'm going to need to start doing this mining. Because grabbing things, changing tasks in the middle of reading is a lot harder than doing one task while reading. Yeah, you would replace... That's the other thing, is you would remove the oars. You would remove the oars from the boats. Um, that would be part of it. So the boats would not have oars, and it would animate your legs moving, and it would change the rowing sound to be like, um, like a pedal boat rowing like splash which is a little bit different with its rhythm yeah the feed animation i think would have to be client side i think everything else could be server side phoenix sparkle says as you stream directly to youtube does the vod automatically save to your channel once you end the stream yes which is why if i put music in that it also gets automatically scanned and destroyed in some cases which is really been haranguing me the last few weeks. They changed how their scanner works. It used to be they only scanned your VOD if you tried to run ads on it. But if you just posted it for people to watch for free, it was fine. But now they scan your VOD even if you don't run ads on the VOD. Which is a nightmare. A nightmare. Ooh, okay. So we want Silk Touch to start here. And we want to put down all of these uh, in one place. Where's a good place for these? I mean, honestly, the best place for these is, like, actually just straight up down here. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's just put them where we won't need to move them. Um, oh, I'm having immediate regrets about... Not I, I was like, I really liked that square method I did the other time. Made it easy to keep track of where I was in the line. 
And why it wasn't opening and closing a bunch of chests unnecessarily. Okay. So. Uh, let's do, just as a reminder, if tips roll in during the uh, reading, I will not be acknowledging them until I'm done with the chapter or there's a logical break. We are $10 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. Ooh, I think we're almost ready to start chapter two, but I want to give people a minute to get those tips in before we start going. Okay. And also, I want to make sure that I've got everything I need. Pickaxes, food. I feel like I'm actually fairly ready, but I always feel like I'm ready to do stuff. And then as soon as I start, oh, what are those up there? Yeah, I was like, let me go check. I need to check on what these boxes are. These are my surplus boxes from before. Oh, come on. Are we doing any hermits helping hermits this season? Uh, arguably, we already did one when I let the wither loose. Okay, so these two can definitely go down there. This one is more of a mess, but you know what? Let's move all of these. Let's just, yeah, move all of them before we... Because, yeah, we want to clear this out, and having these hanging out up here is a problem. How far are we from the beetle joust? Uh, we're currently at 12% jopacity and $10 away from 9 which means we're 30 away from... Six, which means we're 50 away from three and 70 away from the entrance of the Beetlejoast. I don't like have this in a chart. I just have to mentally step through it. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So the stone we're going to put down here. Uh, what's this one? This one's the other stone one. This one's dirt. And this one's stone I think I can combine the oh wait hold on cobblestone here okay that actually worked better than I thought okay so this is an entire one of cobblestone we can bring to etho these this ones are f almost full but not quite this one's actually full okay Okay. Speaking of foot pedals, how are they laid out? Or are they uniquely shaped? Yeah, they're differently sized and shaped. I can easily tell just by feel which one's which. Daniel J. McGrell says, Joe, how are you liking Moby Dick? I'm liking it a lot, but I liked it the last time I read it too. Oh, here's the other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to move a bed onto the beacon. So we're not... We shouldn't have to run all the way over here all the time now that we've got our chests in that area there. When does the Joe Pasty reset? 6 a.m. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania time. Because in this house, we follow Groundhog Day rules. Okay, one, two, three. And then we left some wood over here. Yeah, so we can make a bed. Why? Okay. Why do we have a bone? Oh, yeah. Skeleton. Skeleton, skeleton, wood. That was almost the lava pit. Thank you. Skeleton, skeleton, far, far from home. Can we get up onto that is the question. I mean, I know the answer is yes, but the also the question is why not now? Okay, so before we continue reading, we got a tip rolling in from Drew Baca, who says, let's get the Beetlejoast out before Chapter 2, and then is blowing up this abacus with 70. Boom. That is going to get us all the way four face camera expansion milestones. Let's go process those now real quick before we go into Chapter 2. Expand... Just do 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 do
Lowering the Joe opacity now to 9% after that first face camera expansion. Numero dos, even larger jost. La da 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 dee 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 ba 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 doo 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 Lowering the Joe opacity now to 6%. Okay, it looks like night might be about to fall in game. Numero trace, even larger face. La da 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 da. The uh, OBS really starts struggling as the camera gets this big. Bear with me a second, folks. And. Oh no, we can't play webcam expander because the um, thing. But anyway, before we drop to 3%, let's show you how big the eye is. This is why we can't leave it at 100 when it gets that big. Look at that. Going to bring it back down to 3%. And then for this next face camera expansion, here we go. Uh, dear live stream viewers, will you watch my face? It took up your screens, then began to fade. It replaced some pixels from a game you like. Yeah, this is my job. You know I want to be a webcam expander. Webcam expander. <laughs> it's off-color optics from a broken cam. And some of the chat just throws up its hands. The Jost is beetled for showtime now. It's a heady job because he wants to be a webcam expander. Webcam expander. Webcam expander. Webcam expander. Hey, everybody, it's me, the Beetlejuice with the Beetle Boast here, uh, as I always am in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you very much to Drew Baca for getting us there. Also, Pickled Monkey, tipping 10 in the YouTube chat. Thank you, Pickled Monkey, for that. That's going to go ahead and get us now $40 away from our next face camera expansion milestone. You know, I am worth it. I'm the Beetlejuice. We got a raid rolling in from Amber Lynn times three. Welcome. I'm Thunderstone. Welcome, Lusa. Welcome, Tenshi. Welcome, Amber Lynn. Thank you so much. Welcome, Raiders. My name is Joe Hills. I'm broadcasting live from Nashville, Tennessee, here on the Hermitcraft server, where we do completely normal things, like leave the setting up stream now sign available for an hour and 40 minutes. Let's take that down. And then we uh, terraform. Uh, Cub fan. It says I've mined more than anybody else on the server. 293 stone. It's a lot of stone. Uh, but yeah, it's for our pal Etho. You know, there's a lot of people who are like, Oh my god, I would do anything for that Etho. He's so dreamy. So I don't know why I'm getting, you know, a lot of criticism for like going off and mining 300,000 stone for Etho. You know, I'm just helping out. I'm just being a pal. You know, it's fine. Don't need a lot of people judging me. Anyway, so we're just going to mine all the stone here. But, you know, because it's Hermitcraft, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. We're going to kind of do, uh, you know, people like being impressed by things. I hope, uh, Amber, that your uh, viewers like being impressed. I'm sure they were impressed by you, you know, that sort of thing. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. We are going to be actually... Reading chapter two of Moby Dick. We read chapter one earlier when we were starting our work here. Uh, I read three chats continuously every stream I do. So it's actually not that hard for me to read a novel out loud while I'm doing stuff like this. So we're going to do a lot of digging and we're going to read Moby Dick chapter two, The Carpet Bag. We are just about to start that now. So here we go. Moby Dick chapter two, The Carpet Bag. I stuffed a shirt or two into my old carpet bag, tucked it under my arm, and started for Cape Horn and the Pacific. Quitting the good city of old Manhattan, I duly arrived in New Bedford. It was a Saturday night in December. Much was I disappointed upon learning that the little packet for Nantucket had already sailed and that no way of reaching that place would offer till the following Monday. As most young candidates for the pains and penalties of whaling stop at the same New Bedford, thence to embark on their voyage, it may as well be related that I, for one, had no idea of doing so. For my mind was made up to sail in no other than a Nantucket craft, because there was a 
fine, boisterous something about everything connected to that famous old island, which amazingly pleased me. Besides, though about uh, though New Bedford has of late been gradually monopolizing the business of whaling, and though in this matter poor old Nantucket is now much behind her, yet Nantucket was her great original. The tire of this Carthage, the place where the first dead American whale was stranded. Where else but from Nantucket did those aboriginal whale men first sally out in canoes to give chase to the Leviathan? And where but from Nantucket, too, did that first adventurous little sloop put forth, partly laden with imported cobblestones, so goes the story, to throw at the whales? in order to discover when they were nigh enough to risk a harpoon from the bowsprit. Now, having a night, a day, and still another night following before me in New Bedford ere I could embark for my destined port, it became a matter of concernment where I was to eat and sleep meanwhile. It was... A very dubious looking, uh, a very dark and dismal night, bitingly cold and uh, cheerless. I knew no one in the place. With anxious grapnels, I had sounded my pocket and only brought up a few pieces of silver. So, wherever you go, Ishmael said I to myself, as I stood in the middle of a dreary street, shoulder in my bag, and comparing the gloom toward the north with the darkness toward the south. Wherever in your wisdom you may conclude to lodge for the night, my dear Ishmael, be sure to inquire the price, and don't be too particular. With halting steps... I paced the streets and passed the sign of the crossed harpoons, but it looked too expensive and jolly there. Further on from the bright red windows of the Swordfish Inn, there came such fervent rays that it seemed to have melted the packed snow and ice from before the house, for everywhere else the congealed frost lay ten inches thick in a hard asphaltic pavement, Rather weary for me when I struck my foot against the flinty projections, because from hard, remorseless service the soles of my boots were in a most miserable plight. Too expensive and jolly, again thought I. Pausing one moment to watch the broad glare in the street and hear the sounds of the tinkling glasses within, on, Ishmael, said I at last. Don't you hear? Get away from the, do the door. Your patched boots are stopping the way. So on I went. I now, by instinct, followed the streets that took me waterward. For there, doubtless, were the cheapest, if not the cheeriest ends. Oh, such dreary streets. Blocks of blackness, not houses on either hand. And here and there, a candle? Like a candle moving about in a tomb. At this hour of night, of this day of the week, with that quarter of the town proved all but deserted. But presently I came to a smoky light proceeding from a low, wide building, the door of which stood invitingly open. It had a careless look, as if it were meant for the uses of the public. So, entering, the first thing I did was to stumble across the ash box in the porch. Ha! <laughs> thought I, <laughs> as flying particles almost choked me, are these ashes from that destroyed city, Gamora? But, ah, uh, the crossed harpoons and the swordfish... This, then, must be the sign of the trap. However, I picked myself up, and, hearing a loud voice within, 
pushed on and opened a second interior door. It seemed the great black parliament sitting in Tofei. A hundred dark faces turned round in their rows to peer beyond a black angel of doom was beating a book in the pulpit. It was an African church, and the preacher's text was about the blackness of darkness and the weeping and wailing and teeth gnashing there. Ha, Ishmael, muttered I, backing out. Wretched entertainment at the sign of the trap. Moving on. I came at last to a dim sort of light not far from the docks and heard a forlorn creaking in the air and looking up saw a swinging sign over the door with a white painting upon it faintly representing a tall jet of misty spray with these words underneath the sprouter in peter coffin coffin sprouter rather ominous in that particular connection thought i but it is a common name in nantucket they say and i suppose peter is a immigrant from there as the light looked so dim and the place for the time looked quite enough and the dilapidated little wooden house itself looked as if it might have been carted here from the ruins of some burnt district and as the swinging sign had bit of a poverty sort of creak to it i thought that here was the very spot for cheap lodgings and the best of pea coffee it was a queer sort of place a gable-ended old house one side palsied as it were and leaning over sadly it stood on a sharp bleak corner where that tempestuous wind Euroclidon kept up a worse howling than it ever did about poor Paul's tossed craft. Euroclidon, nevertheless, is a mighty pleasant zephyr to anyone indoors, with his feet on the hob quietly toasting for bed in judging of that tempestuous wind called Euroclidon, says an old writer, of whose works I possess the only copy extant. It maketh a marvelous difference whether thou lookest out at it from a glass window where the frost is all on the outside, or whether thou observest it from the sashless window where the frost is on both sides, and of which the white death is the only glazier. True enough, thought I, as this passage occurred to my mind, Old black letter, thou reasonest well. Yes, these eyes are windows, and this body of mine is the house. What a pity they didn't stop up the chinks and the crannies and thrust in a little lint here and there. But it's too late to make any improvements now. The universe is finished, the copestone is on, and the chips were carted off a million years ago. Poor Lazarus there, chattering his teeth against the curbstone for his pillow and shaking off his tatters with his shiverings, he might plug up both his ears with rags and put a corn cob in his mouth, and yet that would not keep out the tempestuous Eurycladon. Eurycladon, says old Divvies in his red silken wrapper. He had a, a redder one afterward. Poof, poof. What a fine, frosty night. How Orion glitters. What northern lights. Let them talk of their oriental summer climes, of everlasting conservatories. Give me the privilege of making my own summer with the coals. But what thinks Lazarus? Can he warm his blue hands by holding them up to the grand northern lights? Would not Lazarus rather be in Sumatra than here? Would he not far rather lay him down lengthwise along that line of the equator? Ye, ye gods, go down to the fiery pit itself in order to keep out this frost? 
now that Lazarus should lie stranded there on the curbstone before the door of Divi's. This is more wonderful than that an iceberg should be moored to one of the Maluka's. Yet Divi's himself, he too lives like a czar in an ice palace made of frozen size. And being a president of a temperance society, he only drinks the tepid tears of orphans. But no more of this blubbering now. We are going a whaling! And there is plenty of that yet to come. Let us scrape the ice from our frosted feet and see what sort of a place this spouter might be. Thus concludes Chapter 2 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville, The Carpet Bag. Welcome, Raiders. We got some raids during that segment. We were just reading Chapter 2 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville, which you probably figured out from the last thing I said. Moby Dick is one of the weirdest stories ever written. It predates Wikipedia, but imagines it in a way that no other science fiction ever has. The story of Moby Dick is the story of a guy at a party basically trying to explain to you about this time he went on a boat, but he keeps looking up stuff and getting distracted. And it is just a really long story. But yeah, it's um, it's kind of like a Wikipedia deep dive into trying to like explain something. Like It's like he's trying to explain something, but then he just gets distracted and starts talking about the history of that thing and then goes into the history of the thing behind that thing and where the guy who made that thing is from. He's all over the place. It's not a very rapidly moving story, but that's fine. That's fine. Um... Yeah, it is, it is a little bit challenging to read while playing Minecraft. I'm a bit out of practice. I used to do this with Dracula. We read the entire Dracula novel last season on Hermitcraft, and so we are kicking off with Moby Dick this season. Okay. So, let's see what is going on. In the different chats, just getting caught up. It is harder than usual for me to read the chats while reading Moby Dick. Well, Moby Dick is the whale. Moby Dick is not Ishmael or Herman Melville. Moby Dick is the name of the whale. The main character, we don't know his real name. But he opens with, what up, it's your boy Ishmael. And if you've learned anything about people who tell stories online, most of them don't use their real name. Soda Pop Megatron says, I love the Saturday book reading sessions you give Dracula. It was great. Well, hey, if you enjoy those, just as a reminder, uh, well, that's the wrong link. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash joehills and YouTube Super Chat. Just two chapters for tonight? Uh, probably, because I've got an early morning. i got to go to the airport tomorrow. But it was... But we got a lot done. We filled 55 shulkers with stone for Etho. And he's paying me two diamonds per shulker. So that feels like a pretty good deal. I, I think I'm doing well on that. Ishmael has made it to the hotel. That's progress. He also explained that it was cold out. That was imp important to him. Okay. So, andesite and coal and stuff, we're going to pull a separate shulker for. Do I have the stone permit? No. Etho has the stone permit? I was giving away stone. I gave away about 50 double chests of stone, and Etho's like, uh, I need to start paying you to provide me with that stone. And I was like, sure, two diamonds a shulker. And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't charging people anything for it. I was just giving it away to hermits who need it. So. I am streaming. Uh, so Moby Dick gets read every Saturday night is we do the Saturday, we do the readings on Saturday nights is the, it's like a weekly tradition that we started with Dracula. We used to do before Dracula, we would do short stories and poetry and songs on Saturday. 
And then I started reading Dracula one Saturday, and I was like, we should read all of Dracula. This is great. And then we read all of that. And then people were like, oh, let's read another novel right away. And I, I like... I was like, ah, I, I don't know. I kind of waited and wait for a little bit. I wanted to wait until the new season because I was kind of out of projects that needed a lot of, like... The thing is, I can only do certain types of Minecraft work while reading. And basically, we had finished all the season nine stuff that I could do while reading Dracula. At that point, I really need to focus on, like, actively making stuff, and it's harder to be creative and building and designing things while you're reading Dracula than it is to, like, just grab stuff from, like, a desert. Yeah, this is Hermitcraft. Scar, Impulse, and Cover Online. These guys sound like they're really close by. Oh, they're up there. Oh no, he's never gonna despawn because he's got uh, holding stuff. Once one of them gets the smell of you, they'll just all rush over. I really should just take care of this whole thing up here. Let's let's maybe teleport up a little bit. Yeah, massive mountain clearing is definitely easier for reading. Yeah, there's a separate playlist that I create for the VODs from the Reading Nights. created it yet for this season because we haven't gotten it going yet but yeah so I'm wholesale supplying stone to etho and then he's going to take it and upgrade it with, like, uh, moss and cut, cut stone cutting and stuff. Oh, good luck with your book, Nikki Graywood. Oh yeah, just as a reminder, we are uh, $40 away from the next Beetlejuice expansion. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Hills and YouTube Super Chat. Okay. So yeah, we're probably going to wrap up in the next five minutes or so. So if you want to get those last minute tips in, do it now. If this is the sort of stream you like. It really is uh, reassuring when I do weird stuff if people throw money at me. Like, it's... It's easier to justify. <laughs> like, if I have to go to my parents and I'm like, hey, uh, could you guys uh, help me out with this uh, down payment on a mortgage? And my dad's like, hey, uh, well, what kind of... What kind of things are you doing with your business to encourage growth? You know, and then I'm like, uh, well, I'm I'm reading Moby Dick on Saturday nights now. That's new. You know, and he's like, wait, people pay you for that. I it really looks good if the answer is yes, people pay me for that. Right? That's that helps. So yeah. Last call for tips. Get them rolling in if you want to. No worries if not.
Yeah, hopefully the airport isn't too bad. I'm I'm optimistic. It's the end of spring break, though, so it's always kind of a rush. Hey, thank you very much to Alice for tipping five, who says book club hype. Thank you very much, Alice. That puts us now 35 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. Okay. I wonder how long you can make a record with the record player mod on Hermitcraft. <laughs> if I could just sell, like, books on tape in shulker boxes. Where it's like, here's all of Dracula. GT Buckets! Rolling in, tipping two. Thank you, GT Buckets. And then Lost Cult Music tips another three. Who says, looking forward to next week already? Woo! Thank you very much. That's going to get us now 30 away from the next Space Camera Expansion Milestone. Appreciate you. Is it a 30 second limit? Uh, yeah, that'd be a lot of shulker boxes. I don't, I don't think I could justify that. Uh, I don't have a shulker farm like Etho. I don't think Etho has. Uh, he just has access to beefs. You, yeah, uh, Stephanie Hall, I, I don't feel super great about you uh, not answering truthfully when your spouse asks why there are so many PayPal tips to Joe Hills. You don't have to lie about it being a coffee shop. That's, uh, yeah. In the long term, I would rather that you, uh, you know, told the truth. That, oh, you, you, okay, you, you, you followed up with the truth. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, because, uh, you know, you've been a, a great uh, supporter of the community for a long time and uh, you know last thing I want is for that to cause uh, you any sort of problems with your spouse yeah I'm a big fan about uh, big fan of financial honesty between spouses Oh, that's right. When I get done with the stream, I can go eat the rest of my pizza. <laughs> Yay. Very excited about that. Uh, Cece says, the heart in my message turned into a three, shaking my head at PayPal while you delete the bracket. Uh, yeah, so PayPal does that because it's uh, it looks like code. But hey, we got a few tips rolling in. Thank you very much to Screeching Newt, who tips five. Appreciate you, Screeching Newt. And then CC, uh, I know it's a heart now that you said that. Tips 10 and says, thanks for a lovely evening, Joe. Well, thank you so much, CC, for supporting the arts and, in particular, my show. Then we got another A40 rolling in from Craig. Thank you very much, Craig. 15 gets us one face camera expansion. And then, uh, let's see, 35, 40 gets us halfway to the next one after that. So here we go. Please direct your attention down to slot 9 where I'm putting the hot in the hot bar. So I can say, how do y'all grow hills here expanded? Oh, wait, no, it's me, the Beetlejuice, expanded as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. dee 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 Ah, dog. Yeah, we're just sliding over here. Woo. It's in the lower left corner. Yeah, look at that. Ah, I'm fantastic. Oh, wow. Gotta love that uh, gleam of the skin. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I hope we're doing great. Uh, but yeah, that puts us 25 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. John says, what's the best way to give money? Uh, PayPal has a slightly better uh, rate, but like not everybody has PayPal, so YouTube is welcome as well. So, yeah. YouTube Super Chat and PayPal.me slash Joe Hills. I already did the last call for tips, but technically, since you're asking for the link, I'm happy to provide it. Okay. So we're just mining out this stuff, waiting for make sure. I like to give it a few minutes after the last tips roll in because uh, sometimes they come in batches or PayPal is slow. So giving that a minute. We 
Replace Koreans hold music with Dracula chapter one. <sighs> That's pretty good. That's uh, that's actually pretty solid. I should bring an audiobook if I go to the DMV. That's fine. I wanted to re-listen to Dracula anyway. <laughs> Mawo, I can send you a link to what we're building if you want. Uh, here it is. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is not in the public domain, unfortunately. Big fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, one of my favorite books from my youth into my young adulthood. I haven't reread it for a while, but probably will as soon as I get the chance. I've just been busy. Okay, that's one entire pickaxe basically wiped out. Wow, 10% left. You gotta keep it pixelated. Do I have unbreaking on both of these? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, see, this is why we don't wrap up the stream. We did get another tip rolling in from Heidi for Tim. Thank, thank you very much, Heidi. That's gonna get us now oof, 15 away from the next Space Gamer Expansion milestone. Okay. A Christmas Carol might be more on theme, but there's some really winning Dracula chapters. Yeah, is there a DMV in a uh, in a Christmas Carol? I'm not sure. I. Uh, what's the uh, theme? Yeah, so we're laying out that building, uh, the Bell Laboratories Holmdel campus from Monmouth County, New Jersey. But we gotta remove a bunch of mountains first. Uh, don't come in here and promote brands. That's weird. They're either paying you to come in here and promote brands, in which case that's not cool because I should be getting a cut, or you're stealing jobs from somebody else who should be getting paid to promote brands, which is also not me because I'm not getting a cut. Okay. Maybe I should put on the cask of a put the cask of Amontillado woe onto a, a music disc. I don't know if that's short enough. That might fit five minutes. But Fortunato Woe. The uh, Amontillado Woe. I have my Dow out. Luck on loop, right? Oh, I'm new here. Is this how you usually talk? Yes. Okay. So it's time to wrap up the stream. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight here on uh, twitch.tv slash joehills and also youtube.com slash joehillsdsd and also uh, joehills.net slash live and anywhere else people have been restreaming us. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's go see what's going on in the broader world of streaming. <sighs> uh, looks like Wormhole Pinball from down in Houston is streaming. Let me make sure I'm muted. 
Uh, looks like they're playing Whirlwind, so we're going to uh, go ahead and slash raid Whirlwind. Or Wormhole Pinball. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, I did not sleep well last night, and I've had an exhausting day, and I'm going to have an exhausting day tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. Y'all have a good time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed Moby Dick. Oh, hey, one last tip just rolled in from John for five. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm glad I checked that. Uh, so anyway, we're wrapping up. Yeah, I got to rest my back. I got to go get up early and go to the airport. So anyway. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. Oh, yeah, our raid message is howdy, y'all. Joe Hills right here. Joe Hills out!